So we got the first tree cut up, even though my Husqvarna chainsaw had troubles. I got a couple of cuts with that one. Had to use my Ryobi 10 inch pole saw to finish it off. Now we've got the sister tree up here. So I'm standing behind that first tree, pan around a little bit. Here's our second tree. There's actually two of them laying one on top of the other. Another angle at that tree. Here's what we're trying to get back to, this little meadow back here. We've got some more work to do once we get back here. But we're looking to connect this all the way out there. Should be able to come up with a good half acre or more food plot. Gonna have some work ahead of us, but that's what we're up to. It's Thursday, April 23rd, and I'm back here to work on Mike's food plot. You'll remember way back when there used to be trees laying there and everything else. We've done quite a bit of work in here since that time. This is the west side, and you can see that tree was laying in there, the other one out there, various stumps and down trees in the meadow area, a lot of uh, small pine trees, three, four feet, same thing out here. All that's been cleaned out, the big stuff anyways. Started to build a, a screen there, a barrier. As you know, there's going to be a raised hunting blind, a two-person hunting blind from behind that screen. The big winds took that pine tree over and busted it off, so there it lays. It's not a bad thing necessarily. So I was in here... I don't recall. The days all run together. Two, three days ago, they spent a lot of time doing tractor work. There were all kinds of big holes and hills and everything else. And you can see that we've uh, put a rough, a rough grade on it anyhow, enough to keep it moving. There's some natural deer trails that come in and out of here. I'm going to do some chainsaw work today and open some of this up so that the deer have plenty of additional space to get in and out. There's a lot of underbrush that's still here since I don't own a true bush hog. I'll be doing it by hand today with the Ryobi uh, brush cutting head and my bushwhacker. Back in the day, we'd be using loppers and uh, a hand sickle and machete. But you can see what we're left with. There's a couple of stumps that are still there and stubborn. I'm just going to leave them for now. They're not harming anybody. So that's my objective for today is to knock all of this brush out of here, get it leveled out, and then we'll be able to hit it with a harrow drag and finish a grade on it, prep it to plant some buckwheat here at the end of May, try to improve the soil. So, okay, I'll break for now. I'll come back at the end of the day and give you a look, see what I got accomplished. Okay, welcome back. Well, it's later in the day on Thursday. I got rained off, but it's let up now, so I thought I'd run down here. I'm on my way into town to get some diesel fuel. Um, I was able to use the bushwhacker and my Ryobi and get all of this slash knocked down for the most part. And uh, I also got back there with the chainsaw and knocked down some of the 
or cut up some of the deadfall so the deer could travel their normal travel patterns. I'll show you that here in a second. Walking down in this end of the meadow. You can see I did a pretty good job. But it's uh, I need to come out here with my range finder and kind of pinpoint it. But you certainly, I'll go back to the back side over here and point back over. Swinging around. There's a tree we call Eileen. And now you may as well call it I really lean. That wind really, I think, moved it a little bit. All right, that's Mike's view from his blind. Now we just have to build a, a two-person hunting blind raised. So that'll be a project for the summer. I'm going to get that out of there with the forks. Okay, everybody, stay safe. Over and out. Hey everybody, Todd here. So today I'm out at Mike's food plot. The plot that I created here, we cleared a lot of uh, brush and dead trees, whatnot. It's probably a little over half an acre. But it really needs the ground leveled out. It needs to be worked up. So what I've done is I bought a Groundhog Max disc plow. They're really designed to go on it at the back of an ATV, but it's perfect for what we need. And I need to take the humps out of a lot of our trails, too. I don't want a big disc. I've got that Titan three-point draw bar that I've got the disc plow attached to. Ordinarily, that would stab into the back of an ATV. You jack it up about four inches on blocks and drive off of it. I've obviously got the three-point hitch, so I could lower that right down and pull it up, what have you. Uh, to make it fit onto my uh, draw bar, I had to get an extension. You can see that piece here in the center. That's just a uh, Harbor Freight extension, cost me 20 bucks. And you can see the problem. The pin length from the collar back to the pin, look how much... Uh, you know space you got on the on the groundhog max so no big deal i kind of anticipated that so i picked it up i mean it's almost perfect look at that so that puts us in business so you know if you've got a compact tractor you're looking to do something like this um just know that you just got to order it standard you don't need any kind of a kit that comes with it that they sell for the atvs uh but you will have to pick up a 12 inch extension if you're going to put it into uh, a three point draw bar like I've got. So I'm going to go ahead and start working up this field and I'll check back with you. I'll let you know how well it worked. Okay, wish me luck. Okay, I'm back. I would say that it's probably been about 45 minutes or something and I didn't do a good walk around to begin with, but uh, that's all relatively leveled out, and I mean, that was bad. Uh, the disc is done pretty well, honestly. Now, I've got sandy soil. <clears throat> I think if you tried to do what I'm doing here in heavy clay or something like that, you'd be really disappointed because you need some weight on there. Um, I don't know how well you can hear with the wind, but... You know, this stuff out here was so rough before and just pockets and pockets of holes, you know. And I've cut this a couple of different directions and it really has helped slice it all up good. This stuff back here was just all sod, especially back here. And this has done a good job. Of, cutting it up and bringing all kinds of crap to the surface so i'm in a position now where i can get in here with the harrow rake where before there's no way in hell i could have raked this in the condition that it was in so the disc has been able to level things out for me and take some of the humps you know the highs and the lows out of these whoop-de-doos here and now i can drive it with the rake 
and I should be able to finish this off with the rake. I spent about 15 minutes picking debris up. You can see this crap that the disc was able to bring to the surface and show me. So, you know, it's definitely uh, been helpful for sure. And, uh, and this is cut up. You can't really see it because there was such high... Uh, can you see how I can't even find my damn feet you look at how much grass was in here and stuff that's all been sliced up so I don't think that the video does it justice as to how much this has been sliced up now so yeah I mean I don't know I guess on a scale of 1 to 10 10 being holy crap I can't believe how well it worked and one being a total failure you know i'd probably give it a seven um and this is by far the toughest one that i had to do so that's a one-time deal i got to get it done what i really need to be able to deal with is taking these trails out and leveling them leveling them off but without something like this to cut that side apart you're not able to do it i mean i my box blade just grabs sod and the bucket and everything else i mean i should be able i don't care how many times i got to run down the trail just to slice it up good i should be able to use that thing to help me on my trails so yeah you know i got like 325 bucks into the disc i already had the three point uh draw bar so uh, I think I got 322 bucks into the disc and then another 22 bucks into the extension. So 350 bucks. Um, I'll use that and get my money's worth for sure. So that's kind of where I'm at on my first impression. I've got several other food plots I got to do the same kind of a thing on. So I'll be back to you later, let you know on those how well it's doing, what my experience is.